Hi Taurus, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your December 2021 mid-month tarot reading. This is a reading for all Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Thank you so much for all the support you've given of the channel, given to the channel. I appreciate it all and love reading. So I'll continue here. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to you. I post new readings every Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, come back in a couple of days. You can watch a new reading. Fridays are always a general reading. Mondays are a different style every week. So today's reading will, will be a more detailed Celtic cross style reading. I also do a love reading. And then coming up soon, we'll have a 2022 year of predictions reading. So that, that'll be fun. And um, if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right, what advice do you have for Taurus? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What does Taurus need to know, please, for the best and highest good of all concerned with Taurus? Messages for Taurus, please. Okay. All right, so we'll begin here with the tarot, and then we'll have the Angel Answers Oracle cards. Current situation, we've got the sun. The immediate influence is the Ace of Wands. The uh, Your destiny here, you've got the Queen of Swords. The distant past, we have the Death card. The more recent past, we got the Four of Swords. The energy coming towards you is the Ten of Pentacles. You're represented by the Queen of Cups. The person or situation you're attracting is the Six of Cups. We've got, interesting, we've got the um, High Priestess in your hopes and fears. Eight of Cups in the outcome, but don't get scared off. That's a, I, I love the Eight of Cups, personally. It's the hero's journey. So we've got here your clarifiers, the lovers, the Nine of Pentacles, Nine of Wands, all right? So interesting, we've got Scorpio, Leo, Gemini here. Um, da, 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 da. We've got Earth, Water, Fire, and Air. We've got all the elements. So... We've got two nines. That's significant, okay? It's your clarifying energy. So what do you need to know? What do you need to do to move forward? Nines are about completion and attainment. They're a realization, okay? There's a new beginning here, and it brings clarity. Whatever the nine of wands put you through, it gave you a conquering spirit, but Jesus, it's like, can we find an easier path than that universe? Because it's that you don't give up, okay? So the good news is you have stamina, you have mental, emotional, and of course, spiritual is always there. It's just a matter of us connecting to it. Um, he's the wounded warrior, though, so I do want to be clear about that, but he's he's quite bulky because what he's done has given him strength, okay? So whatever you've been through, it gave you some strength, fortitude, perseverance. And the Nine of Pentacles, though, she's almost like the opposite. She's a card of luxury, attainment. You've got both the Nine and Ten of Pentacles, which I like to see here. That's very positive energy. Pentacles are, of course, about money, but they're also about manifesting and stability. So if it's a relationship you're asking about, you're manifesting something where you'll invest in it. It will be deep. It's meaningful. This is not a, you know, fly-by-night kind of relationship, if that's what it is. Anything you're asking about, it runs the distance. There's something here that's very special. And with the lovers, that is a, definitely a meaningful relationship. It's beauty inside and out. It's a wonderful energy. And so with this, though, you use your discrimination. It's not just being like love struck and blinded by, you know, something new or you're on this pink cloud. It really is about using your discrimination, but also it's harmony and attraction. It really is the right relationship inside and out. So if it's work related too, I'd still say it. Um, it is a card, though, very layered card with the Archangel Raphael here, and it represents Adam and Eve. Adam's the conscious mind, Eve is the subconscious. And you notice Adam looks at Eve because our conscious mind influences the subconscious, and then the, the Eve looks at the divine, so our subconscious is related to that universal consciousness. That's how we manifest. And so she is able, though, to ignore that serpent over her shoulder. It's that temptation into negative thinking. It's that temptation into, you know, looking for dog shit. If you're looking for dog shit, you're going to find dog shit. Excuse my French. But you know what I mean? No offense against the French. Excuse my language. How about that? If I was a French person, I would hate that saying. Anyway, um, but with this, I do want to acknowledge that. 
we attract what we are. And so we have to monitor some of that. Anyway, let's move forward because this is really nice, isn't it? The sun, the ace of wands, and let's just bring in the ten of pentacles here. You're manifesting something that is absolutely brilliant. Okay, I said you attract what you are. Well, this is what you are. It's wonderful. And there's harmony here. There's synergy here. There's passion, excitement. This is the kind of energy where you wake up every day and you can't wait to begin. It's like, I know something really great is going to happen today. I can feel it already. It's high vibrational energy. So the aces, of course, are all about new beginnings and initiation. So if it's a relationship, it's somebody who's a real match. I mean, there's chemistry here like you wouldn't believe. It's amazing. And if it's from the past, because you do have the Six of Cups in the situation or person you're attracting, I, I feel like it could be somebody who missed an opportunity with you and they know that they did with that Ace of Wands. They're very aware of it. And I feel like it's been on their mind for a long time. Now, if it's not if it's not a love relationship, I still feel like you have, there's somebody who has you in their heart. They've been thinking about you, wondering about you. They want to reconnect. And with that sun energy, I mean, that's beautiful energy for a reunion. It's gains, it's riches, regeneration. It is absolute true joy with the sun card. And so the sun always is a, you know, unconditional energy too. And the sun doesn't discriminate in terms of who it shines on. If you're a turtle in your shell, the sun still comes down on you, whether you want it or not. Um, but with this, it's very positive energy, high vibration with the the wavy rays represented here that indicates high vibration. And it's being like in this place where you feel fantastic. You know, he's the unclothed androgynous child has complete acceptance of who they are and feels like they're on top of the world. That You have a real commanding presence in this energy. So anybody who has to give a presentation or negotiate anything, you have kind of a dominant energy, but not in a bad way. I mean, it's in a way where people will listen to you. And I feel like everyone's nodding their head. I see a group of people nodding their head in agreement, especially too, if it's a negotiation, if you're out there to buy something new, I do feel like you'll get the best price and you'll be very happy with it. There's no buyer's remorse here. So with the Queen of Swords in the destiny position, it's you've got a shrewd sort of direct approach and that's okay um she is very clear in terms of communication but very clear in terms of what she wants too she's known pain and so i feel like they're telling you that in the destiny you're here to learn these lessons have these experiences in this earth school but i don't feel like you're going to be in this life where you repeatedly make the same mistake and sometimes that's our subconscious we've imparted something on it that we don't become aware of until we've repeatedly manifested something we don't like. I think you're a pretty quick learn learner in this energy. You know, she's experienced pain, but she, again, has that ability to kind of turn on a dime and knows what she wants. So you'll be in a place where you'll manifest things that you actually want. You'll have a better ability because you're clear. It's the confusion that gives us some of what we want and some of what we don't want. We're co-creating with the universe and the universe always responds. So when we give this mix, we kind of end up with a mixed bag in return. So with the death card in the distant past, you may have had a change or maybe there was an ending to a relationship because you do have that a few times. And like I said, somebody who wants to reconnect, but the death card allows you to move over the wreckage of the past. You don't stay there. This is a card, interestingly enough, of renewal. It gives you that new life let go to receive. It's like we die into spirit here. We must die to be reborn. And so there's so much in this card depicted. The skeleton represents your higher self. And you see you're moving towards that sunlight. There's a dawn of a new day. There's very few suns in the cards and you have it here a few different times because you also have it in the eight of cups. There's something new here. You have it like four different times. You've got it in the lovers, the sun, of course, you have it here and in the eight of cups. So you're definitely on to new horizons here, but they're better, okay? Any mistakes that you've made too, I feel like in the past you might have felt a bit fooled by somebody or foolish in some way, won't matter. You're just gonna move past it. You know, we kind of say we look at the past, just don't stare. He's looking forward, it's time to move ahead. And so I do feel like you're gonna be into something much better for you if it was a breakup and there's reconciliation the relationship will be so much more mature this time um i do feel like there may have been a bit of an immaturity with it 
Now, the Four of Swords, you, here you are lying in repose and you take a break. You kind of disconnect from all that noisy stuff. It's all that noisy stuff in our mind that gets us so confused on what we really want. It's a card of meditation. It's even for some a card of going to a therapist, talking about the problem, but doing it in a way that's not just living there. It's with a solution so you can release that energy. You're not here to fight. You're not here to have conflict. I still feel like you're empowered. I don't feel like this takes away from it. This was in the past anyway. So again, it may have been one of those things that's giving you this current very empowered energy. That may just be part of the story. You disconnected for a bit. I do see somebody like hiking with a backpack. Maybe that might just represent solitude and getting away from things, getting yourself centered again. Because here you go. This is the energy coming towards you. You've got this Ten of Pentacles, brilliant energy. This is harmony in every area of your life. It's your family getting along, your coworkers getting along. Like I said, you're going to get good deals. If you need to wheel and deal a little bit, there's not going to be much of it. I think you're just going to be succinct and likable enough here so that people want to work with you. It's everybody being in flow. It's also unexpected gifts. So again, you might find you get money from unexpected places, discounts and things like that, but they add up over time. I do feel like you're enter entering into a place where you're really in flow, which is nice. It's nice as you usher in this new year to be in a brilliant new cycle because that's what the Ten of Pentacles brings. It's the wealth card. It's a luxury attainment wealth. It's wonderful. It's also, too, an energy of stability and also the pentacles represent the physical body, too. So you may also do a good job of kind of keeping yourself in check during this holiday season, not getting too crazy, enjoying the fun and the festivities, but not regretting it later. So the Queen of Cups is, re is representing you, and she's a beautiful queen. I mean, you look at that very ornate cup. It's decorative. It's a big deal, okay? There's real love here for you. And I feel like it's interesting because the Queen of Swords is, is a bit harsh, right? I mean, she's got a caustic sense of humor, kind of fun to hang out with, but she doesn't have that loving energy that this one does. Um, it's an intuitive energy too, okay? So it can be an emotional, a time where you're very emotionally invested in people, but you'll use your intuition in the right way so you don't get played in this, okay? It really is about connecting on a way of bringing in pure love. And so in a relationship, I do feel like um, there's somebody here that comes in that you connect with for sure. Um, in terms of your kids too, if you're a parent, this can also be about having them on your mind a lot, thinking about them a lot. And maybe that's important for you right now. But I do feel like you've got an empathic, caring energy and that's what attracts people to you. They love that feeling of being in the in the vibration of love and that's what you have i almost see this like radius around you and people i mean you walk into a room and people can feel it with that queen of cups so the six of cups is the person you're attracting the six of cups is beautiful it's bringing beauty beauty and harmony and that harmony of opposites it is a card of nostalgia okay a sentimental kind of a connection with somebody of the past it, it could be for some of you reconciliation that we've mentioned but in terms of love you've got an important love relationship here if it's not love for you though it may just be being in that place of if it's like a work question or work situation being in a place where everyone's getting along people are looking out for each other because there's reciprocity this is like a card of doing nice things for one another so you may find your your coworker does something small like brings you a starbucks or a coffee how about that we don't want to get too driven by name brands here but either way they do nice things they know your favorite thing too and so um with the high priestess being here She's the psychic, so you've got intuition and the psychic of the tarot. So if you feel like you're not really particularly psychic, you are, okay? Just open yourself up to it. Sometimes we get scared off by that because we think, oh God, is it going to open a portal that I can't manage? Well, it really is up to you and what you think about it. She has high vibrational. This, high, this gown um, creates the pool of consciousness in the tarot, so it's high vibrational stuff. She holds the book of Torah on her lap. The laws of life, the laws of the universe are at her command. You're knowledgeable. You're learned in this behavior, in this card, in this energy. You have a very analytical mind here. So it is too, I feel like you'll have this, this nice sort of uh, ability to assess and make good decisions. She is a bit... Um, 
you, she, she does things in solitude. She likes her alone time. She likes her solitude because it clears her mind and allows her to make good decisions. So with the Eight of Cups here, it's moving on to something deeper, okay? If there's a change coming in, again, you're moving into better things. And so the cups here are all upright that he walks on from. It's almost like his job there is done. He's done what he's needed to. He's made the positive you know, mark that he's wanted to, and he's on to something better. In a relationship, though, it is depth, okay? It's that hero's journey. It's learning why you're here, but it's being connected with people in a deeper way. So I do feel like in a relationship, it represents um, moving on to something more meaningful for you. So I don't necessarily think it represents a breakup as much as you're being guided into the, that next phase of things that are relationship situations that are, they use your skill set, but they also, um, in terms of work, maybe not a relationship using your skill set, but um, in a relationship, something where it's, it's mature. Okay, so... All right, so we have here golden opportunity, okay? So knock and the door will open. We said that. It's up to you, they say. And let go and let the universe, let go, let God, however you want to say that. You've got within the next few months, I'm telling you, things are changing. I knew reconsider was going to come up. So sometimes when it's reconsider, it doesn't mean anything negative. It just means your mind might be a bit fixed on the path, on the how. That's the universe's business. You need to just know what you want and feel like it's already here and it's yours for the taking, Taurus. So good things are on the way for you. I love you and I'll be back again soon.